We've all been raised and trained and conditioned in the way of hurry, right? I mean, we've got watches and apps and stats that celebrate our pursuit of more, but the more we hurry, the less room we have for the way of Jesus and the way of love. So how do we fix it? Well, we're talking about it today. online fam. If we haven't had the chance to meet, my name is Emily and I'm the pastor for Epic Online and welcome to Epic Everywhere. Practical teaching to help you grow in your faith no matter where you're at on your spiritual journey. And as we get started today, I want to take time to welcome all of you who are hanging out with us for the first time. What's up guys? Hey, we've been expecting you and I'm so glad that you're here. Be sure to stick around after today's message because we'll tell you some ways that you can get connected here at Epic Online. And every time that we gather, whether you've been here for 15 minutes or 15 years, I want you to take time to text in. When you text in, it'll give you access to our Next Steps Hub, which has everything that you'll need for today. To text in, you can text the word HERE to 215-999-8575, or you can scan the QR code. And if you are new, definitely text in because I've got a free t-shirt that I want to mail out to you just to say thanks for being with us. Well, one of the things that we say around here is that we all have a next step. That's true, especially when it comes to being all in. And if you've made the decision to follow Jesus, a great next step for you to be all in would be water baptism. You know, when you get baptized, it's really an outward expression of the inward change that occurs when you put your faith in Jesus. So if you're interested in baptism or if you have any questions, you can sign up via the hub or on our website. Our next baptism is scheduled for May 21st. If you're in the Philly area, baptisms are going down at our Roxboro location. Even if you're not getting dunked, we would love for you to join us as we celebrate what God is doing in the lives of people at our church. And I know so many of you aren't even in the Philly area, but we've got you covered. Take a step and let us know you're interested in being baptized. And we'll talk more about what that looks like for you as a part of our Epic Online fam. Well, to give you a glimpse of that life change, we wanted to share one of those stories with you. And after that, we'll go ahead and get to today's message. I believe in faith. And what I truly believe is having, believing in the higher power gets you through them days where you see everything against you. And that unseen, you can really feel that unseen that push you through, to get you through, to help you get past, all the stuff that's being done to you, all the mistakes that you make, that unseen, that faith is very important. It's been tough and rough, and I made a lot of bad decisions. I've hurt a lot of people. I have had trouble forgiving people. And some things, like decisions I had made, even though I know they were right decisions, still the guilt. It's still a lot. So on my journey and when, guess when COVID hit and I found myself alone and through the decisions that I made, I put myself in that alone spot. And then and there, when I, was, I felt just down and out, I really found him again. So it only makes sense when I asked him to help me through this tunnel that Baptism was part of the process. That to get to where I need to be, where he wants me to be, I need to get some of this weight off me. I guess what I believed it to be is a step forward of getting closer to God. And it's a statement saying, I'm ready to walk in a certain path. And by doing this, I'm making a promise to be better, do better, and to accept his glory, and the only way to do that is by making a statement showing that I'm ready. Help me get there. Knowing that I feel blessed, I feel different, I realize that I'm not the same man that I used to be, even from less than a year ago. I'm a totally, I feel different. Even how I respond to adversity is totally different now. So I know and I feel his movement, I feel his presence. So I had pretty much already started walking forward, be more conscious of what I do and what I say 
because everything that I do or say, well, that's anybody, affects everything around you. And to be, to talk more, to express more, to listen more, to be there for others. Like I was raised to always help people, but I think somewhere along the, along the way, I kind of lost, lost it. So to get back to helping there and to be more of a vessel to help other people move forward to whatever their destiny takes them. So it's just to walk more in God's light so that I can be better. My name is Paul. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Epic. And today is Palm Sunday and also the beginning of Holy Week. So if you didn't know, Palm Sunday, we call it this because this is the day we recognize when Jesus enters Jerusalem and people welcome him like a king. And as they do that, they wave palm branches, which represented victory and joy. So that's why we call it Palm Sunday. And we call this Holy Week. And this, this Holy Week commemorates the journey that Jesus takes from that entrance into Jerusalem to his crucifixion and his death and his resurrection on Easter Sunday. So the next seven days, really an opportunity for us to reflect on what Jesus endured and accomplished during this specific week and to reflect really on the love that drove him and I would argue still endures and pursues us to this day. And so today we're gonna to take a look at a very specific moment, a moment that happens on Thursday of Holy Week. It's a, and Christian tradition has referred to this as Maundy Thursday. So you ever wonder why it's called Maundy Thursday, which sounds a little bit weird? The word Maundy is derived from the Latin mandatum, which is where we get the word mandate. Another word for mandate is command. So you follow that? Maundy is mandate, command. Now, why do we call this the Thursday named after mandate or command? Uh, because this is when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And then he tells them this, a new command I give you, love one another as i have loved you so you must love one another does it make sense to you so it's maundy thursday or mandate command thursday because jesus gives this command and obviously this command isn't just important for thursday this command sets really the whole framework for or, and really the main idea or the or the headline for the whole week like what should we be focusing on this week what should we be getting out of holy week the point is love the love that God has for us, the love that, G that was demonstrated by Jesus, and the love that we should have for each other as a result. And I think the more that we can accept God's love, the more that we can live in that love, the more that we love each other, right? That's the whole point of all this, right? That's, that, that's like, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? Um, but you know, and I know, this is easier said than done, right? Like, like we all want to love and be loved, but we're not always good at it right? We're not always good at that. So today I want to drill down on just one specific reason for that. One specific roadblock, one specific enemy of love. Now, one thing, its name is sugar. No, I'm just kidding. Some of you just got real scared and or offended. Uh, no, we're not talking about the dangers of sugar today. Uh, the actual issue, one of the things that's contributing to less love in our lives is this. Hurry. Like our culture, our society, like the way we live our lives in the 21st century, we're all in such a hurry. Like our schedules are packed to the brim. Our lives are centered around speed and convenience. Like our internet has to be fast. Our cars have to be fast. Our shipping has to be fast. Our solutions have to be fast. Our progress has to be fast. We even use slow as an insult. It's like a derogatory term, right? Like, oh, he's slow. She's slow. You're a little slow on the uptake, aren't you? 
I read a book recently called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Uh, my wife, Carly, and I actually read it together. So we're, we're, this is like a new thing for us. So we're reading a few pages or a chapter at a time out loud to each other. And then we talk through some of it. I have loved doing this. I know this is not for everyone, but if you'd like to give it a try, I highly recommend it. I actually saw somewhere recently that Hugh Jackman and his wife do this every morning. Like they read out loud to each other. So if it's good enough for Wolverine, But in that book, author and pastor John Mark Comer says this, hurry and love are incompatible. They're incompatible. It's a pretty strong statement. And he explains that further. Love, joy, and peace are at the heart of all Jesus is trying to grow in the soil of your life. And all three, love, joy, and peace, are incompatible with hurry. So in other words, the way of Jesus, which is also the way of love, is incompatible with the way of hurry. Now, unfortunately for us, uh, we've been trained in and raised in and practiced in and conditioned in the way of hurry. Our culture is now defined by it. Like We're more hurried than ever. We're busier than ever. We're more distracted than ever. And think of that. Because of that, we have more worry and more anxiety and more stress. We have less patience and less peace and really less of the necessary conditions that we need for love to grow and develop in our lives. The truth is, hurry and love, they're incompatible. They're incompatible. So there's a simple principle here. If you want more love in your life, you need less hurry. If you want more love in your life, you need less hurry. Every bit of wisdom we find in scripture, every bit of wisdom that we can get from the saints and from the wisest people across history and all cultures, they all advocate for slowing down, for allowing for the patient, slow work of love. Like no, none of those, none of the wisest people and the wisest sources of wisdom, nobody's saying, you just gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. Nobody's saying that. So today on the first day of Holy Week, as we acknowledge that the point of all of this is love, we wanna remember that the more we hurry, the easier it is for us to miss the point. So it's here that I want to point us to Jesus. So we're going to look at Matthew's gospel account. And the moment we join the story is going to be Thursday of Holy Week. And this is just before Jesus is going to be arrested and then put on trial and a day before he'll be crucified. So this is Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. So right here, we, we see a very simple example of the difference between the way of Jesus versus the way of hurry. So Jesus knows as he goes, as he approaches Gethsemane, he knows that he's reaching the crescendo of his journey. Like stuff is about to go real sideways. Okay. So in 24 hours, he's going to be hanging from a cross, knowing all of this, what does he do? Knowing that he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, knowing that he's about to go through something terrible, knowing that he's got all this, this looming, what does he do? He intentionally and proactively stops. He pauses. He makes the time to pray. Think about that in contrast to the way of hurry. The way of hurry wants to go, go, go. Like the, the way of hurry wants to push through. The way of hurry wants to do more. Even when we're already doing too much, the way of hurry is like, no, we gotta do more. Especially when things are difficult, the way of hurry doesn't wanna stop and deal with that. The way of hurry wants to distract. The way of hurry wants to numb. The way, the way of hurry doesn't wanna stop or, or pause, not on its own anyway. Okay, and the irony is that that many of us who who want to go 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 or always go 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 go, we're forced to stop at some point because we just burn out or break down. Think about it. The hurry, though, 
as we've established, is incompatible with love and with the way of Jesus. So for Jesus, stopping and pausing is built in. It's like a feature of the way of Jesus. And we'll see what it allows us to do. So scripture goes on. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So here in, in this section of scripture, it's revealed to us. It's just this really, really important idea that Jesus stops and he pauses and he allows for prayer and reflection. And you know what happens when he does that? He feels he feels, he feels the weight of what is going on. He feels sorrow in this case. He feels actually, it says, overwhelmed by sorrow. Think about it, Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, feels overwhelmed by sorrow. So because he stops and, and allows himself to stop, he actually feels what's going on and he faces it and he acknowledges it and it allows him to process it. You know what the way of hurry would have us do and what the way of hurry says? The way of hurry says, no, 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 you gotta keep going. Like you gotta keep moving, you gotta keep pushing. Like you do not wanna feel those feelings. Like you don't wanna face or process what's really happening. Let's just go, let's just go, let's just go, let's just go. Isn't that what so many of us have learned to do? to gloss over what you're feeling, to deny what you're feeling, to bury what you're feeling, to distract yourself from what you're feeling, to numb yourself from what you're feeling. Like some of us were even like specifically taught to not feel our feelings. And if you talk to any therapist, any counselor, any social worker, any person who is involved in the deep work of healing, they will tell you some form of this idea that unprocessed grief or pain is at the root of so many of our problems. Unprocessed pain, unprocessed things. And we have said this here at Epic about a hundred times, and it's something that I try to teach to my middle school students because I think it's really valuable. And it's really something that I will scream from the mountaintops a thousand more times because it's that important. Hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. Like when we don't face or process our pain and grief, we harm ourselves and we harm others. We repeat the cycles of wounding and pain. When we're not dealing with what's going on, it leaks out of us at some point. And there are plenty of signs and symptoms, by the way, of unprocessed or unresolved pain in our lives. I mean, this could be showing up in your life as irritability and anger. Um, this could be uh, show up as behavioral overact reaction, so big pendulum swings in your behavior. Uh, this shows up as addictive behaviors and self-harming behaviors. This shows up as the refusal to talk about or acknowledge something. If you or someone in your life refuses to talk about something, it's a big sign that there's something that we're not dealing with. Um, it could show up as apathy or numbness or lack of interest. It could show up as actually over-involvement or obsession with work or a hobby. That one speaks to me. Um, and you know, the interesting thing is it even shows up in somatic issues. Like sometimes we are so good at denying what's going on that we, we we're not dealing with things with our mind or our spirit that our bodies actually try to speak up for us. Our bodies are trying to tell us that something's going on and we ignore it, right? The list, but the list goes on and on. There are signs that are there in our everyday behaviors that there's stuff we're not dealing with because we're in too much of a hurry and we don't want to stop. And this is why John Mark Comer writes, hurry is violence on the soul. I just let that sink in. Hurry is violence on your soul. It's violence because it blocks the work of love 
in our lives. And it continues the cycles of trauma and pain and wounding. It distracts us from the deep work that needs to be done. Like we can't face or process our pain or our grief if we're always in a hurry, if we're always busy, if we're filling every second of our schedules, if we fill every second of our free time with consuming the news or social media or our TV, or we're always looking at our phones. The way of Jesus calls us to slow down because it calls us to love. And love requires a slowdown. And it requires us to process. It requires us to face what we might not want to face. And, and this is important. So that, so that we can be healed. Love does the work of healing us. And that healing work, the work of love in our lives can't happen when we're just hurrying and we're busy and we're distracted and we're numbing ourselves. So as Jesus stops himself, right? He stops and he processes and he feels and he's overwhelmed and he's, and he's filled with sorrow. He begins to pray. And it says, going a little farther, he fell with face, his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And so I, I really appreciate this passage because it doesn't describe Jesus as this completely stoic character, just unfazed, unmoved, unfeeling. Like he doesn't walk through his life like a statue made of stone. Scripture doesn't portray courage or strength as someone who doesn't feel anything. No. Here Jesus is praying to God, overwhelmed with sorrow, and he prays, please, 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 if it is at, at all possible, can we not do this? That's what he's saying in that prayer. Can we not do this? I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to go through with this. Please take this cup from me. And so do you get the power of this? Like in this moment, Jesus is fully human, you know, and a little bit later, he's going to do some fully God things too. But in this moment, he is fully human and there, and he is showing us that being human, right? There is no shame in feeling. There is no shame in struggling. Jesus himself shows that. And this next part is important too in his prayer where he prays this, yet not as I will, but as you will, right? That part's important, okay? But I don't want to get to that yet because when Jesus is done praying here in, the, in this section, okay, uh, scripture describes that he actually goes back to where his disciples are. Uh, he's found that he, they've fallen asleep while he's been praying and while he's been working through his stuff. So he's been doing that long enough and wrestling and struggling and processing that so long that they've fallen asleep on him. And then he goes back to pray a second time. And scripture says this, he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. So you catch what's happening here. Okay. Um, Jesus is like, okay, so again, again, um, about that stuff that, that, that I don't want to really, I don't want to go through God. Um, I don't know if you heard me the first time. So um, I'm going to try it again. Is there any way that I can just not go through with this? So, so Jesus spent a bunch of time praying about it, right? Enough time where his disciples fell asleep on him. And, and you would think like, well, okay. So he prayed about it. And after that, Jesus was struck with the magic uh, God wand. And uh, he now uh, has all the strength that he needs. And he stands up tall and he puffs his chest out and he marches out like Dwayne Johnson and goes, let's do this. No, he, he stopped and he fell to the ground and he prayed and he got back up and he came back and he was still feeling those same things. And so then he just kept praying, right? And scripture tells us that he actually does this again. He goes back to check on his disciples again, and he comes back for a third time to pray. And he prays the exact same things that he did the prior two times. So if you have ever been stressed or worried or overwhelmed, or if you have been struggling, or you have wanted a way out, or you didn't want to deal with the things that you're dealing with, so is Jesus. So yeah, uh, you're not weak for feeling that you're not experiencing a glitch that's called being human welcome to the club 
And ultimately, what we see here is as Jesus prays and as he spends this time processing and reflecting, his heart and his spirit begin to align with the direction where God is leading him. And he knows that he's got to trust and surrender to God's will. And he gets to this place where he says, I know God, I don't want to do this, but not my will, but yours be done. And so after all this time of struggling and prayer, he gets up and yeah, he has the strength now to face what's coming. And what's coming is, right, he's about to be betrayed by a friend, someone in his inner circle. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be unfairly tried and sentenced. He's going to be beaten and mocked and tortured. And he's going to suffer, not because of anything that he did or deserved. And he does all of that and goes through all of that to demonstrate the love that God has for each and every single one of us is love that's unconditional, love that will endure anything, love that has the final word and the ultimate say over hatred and darkness and even death. And it all starts with Jesus stopping and pausing and feeling, and processing, and praying. So here's how we can maximize our experience during Holy Week this week. And really, hopefully, in our lives beyond this week as well, as we learn from Jesus and this moment in Gethsemane, that less hurry equals more love. Less hurry equals more love. And we have to get this equation right. So many of us, we keep going with more hurry. Like we're we're loading up on that part of the equation. More hurry, more hurry, more hurry, more hurry. And it's not giving us more love. It's actually giving us less of that. So here's what we can do practically to make sure that we get that equation right. First, and we're going to start this week and we're going to start today. Slow down and make room. Slow down and make room. Pause. Stop. Like today. Like find a way to make room for reflection and processing and prayer. So those of you who operate by calendars, okay, I want you to open up your calendar. Like now, today, open up your calendar. Look at it. Look at what's going on and make sure that you have cleared it enough to make some time in some room to stop, to slow down, and then do what? To pray, to process, to reflect. We gotta do that. Look at your schedule today, look at your schedule this week, and do that. And so, as part of that, as you're doing that this week, if you're clearing time, and if you're gonna stop, and especially this week, Holy Week, um, you can really take advantage here. One idea that I have for you is you can actually read in scripture and follow along with Jesus's journey through Holy Week. So any of the four gospels will kind of do that for you. But if you want a suggestion, I would suggest you can start with Matthew and start with Matthew chapter 21. So this is where Jesus enters Jerusalem. Um, That's what we acknowledge today for, right? Palm Sunday. And so you can read starting in Matthew 21 all the way through Matthew 28. And and in between those two segments, Matthew 21 and 28, there are parables that Jesus tells. There's a really fun section where he calls out the Pharisees for the hypocrisy. Like he really gives it to them. So that's a fun one. Um, And it takes you all the way through his crucifixion and his resurrection. So one thing we can do this week is clear time, and then we can use some of that time to follow along with Jesus and his journey through this week, to pray, to reflect, and just as important, right, to just stop, to remove yourself from the way of hurry. Allow yourself to stop, to pause, to feel the things that you've been too busy and too distracted to feel, to face some of the things that you have avoided facing, to allow yourself even to struggle a little bit, and then to allow God to speak into your life, to speak into the pain, to speak to the fear, to speak to the anxiety in your life. 
And again, bigger picture, right? We don't want to be doing this just this week. We want to be doing this beyond this week to resist a life of hurry. And to make our lives about leaning into the unhurried work of God's love. So to do that, we can start to ask ourselves this question regularly. Am I slowing down enough to let love do its work? Am I slowing down enough to let love do its work? Or have I filled my schedule too much? Am I running from activity to activity? Am I distracting myself? Am I numbing myself? Remember, less hurry. Change the equation. Less hurry. Am I allowing time and space to feel what I'm feeling and what's actually going on around me and underneath the surface? Less hurry less hurry? Am I listening to my body and what it's telling me? Less hurry. Slow down. Let's allow ourselves to feel and to face what's actually happening. Let's pay attention. Let's be present. Let's listen for God's voice. Let's allow him and his love to lead us into whatever work is necessary so that love can shape us and heal us and so that we can love each other better too. Less hurry, more love. Less hurry, more love. Got it? Less hurry, more love. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we have this week to reflect on what your son Jesus did for us. God, open our eyes to the ways that we have been living our lives in a hurry. God, give us the wisdom to see that. And God, give us the courage to step out of it and into your way, the way of love. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, Paul, for that message. Slow down, make room, less hurry, more love. You know, there have been more than a few occasions in my own life when I've been desperate to hear from God. And as I've come to him with my frustration, he's lovingly reminded me how it is that I would hear from him or sense him or thoughtfully join in on what he's trying to do in my life when I've been moving way too fast for that to be even a possibility. Less hurry, more Jesus, more love. Well, last week was really special. Kent, our lead pastor, led our entire church through a time of commitment. We're at the beginning of our two-year growth journey called All In. And as a part of that, we're asking every person in our church to participate in some way. And our goal is 100% engagement. Many of you joined us last week. And so to share a little update, we've got a video from Kent. So check this out. Well, hey, everybody. So last week, many of us made our All In giving commitment to help advance the mission of our church over the next two years. And I know you're probably wondering, so what's our total? Did we make it? Where are we at? Uh, listen, I'd love to be able to give you the total, uh, but because one of our goals was 100% engagement, we're gonna wait just a couple weeks so that everybody has a chance to be able to get in their commitment. And then I'm gonna let you know the total and we'll celebrate all that God has done through All In. Now listen, this is gonna happen just after Easter, April 16th. Now, if you haven't made your commitment yet, I wanna encourage you to go in and get that in as soon as possible. There's a digital commitment card online to help you do that. Um, once you have made your commitment, you can go ahead and start giving. Remember. This isn't the finish line. This is actually just the starting line for the next two years. Hey, really believing some great things ahead. Let's get it. Once again, thank you for your generosity. If you didn't get a chance to participate last week, you can do that right now on the Next Steps Hub, or you can head to our website, epic.church slash all in. Well, this week is a huge week because it is Easter week and we're kicking it all off with a special Good Friday experience that we're dropping right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. We'll have a time of reflection. We'll take communion together. And then we've got a special song from our band, Epic MSC. And if you can't make it for the premiere, we got you. We'll have it on demand for you all week long so that you can watch it wherever and whenever it's convenient to you. And then be here next Sunday for 
before Easter. Our team's working really hard to create a powerful experience that you'll be proud to share. So invite some people to join you and be here at 8 a.m. for the premiere and our live chat or watch it on demand. Well, it's been an awesome day. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you right back here next week.